Hey everyone, and welcome back to ECG vlog number five. This week, uh, the question that got posed was we gave some pretty limited patient information with this 12 lead, and we wanted to know what was the name of the T wave pattern that was present in the precordial leads there in V3 through V6. And the answer is this is known as a De Winters T wave. So in this episode, we're just going to talk about what this is, what this means, where it came about, and some final take home points to remember, as well as some clinical examples. And so if we zoom into V3 here, this pattern of T wave is, like we said, known as the De Winters T wave. It's characterized usually by an upward sloping initial portion of the T wave. We get some peaking of the T waves. There's no hyperkalemia involved with these patients typically, but this peaking of the T wave, like I said, is exclusive to the De Winters T wave, not hyperkalemia. And the pattern is present in the precordial leads. You'll probably most notably see this like in this example in V3 progressing into V4, V5, and gets a little more subtle as it, as it uh, makes its way out to the uh, lateral precordial leads. But what is the clinical significance of this? A De Winters T wave means that this is a proximal LAD occlusion, which means that we are activating the cath lab for these patients. And what's special about this De Winters T wave, if we notice, there's actually no ST elevation that we see. So this falls under the category of what we like to describe as an OMI, or an occlusive myocardial infarction. These patients are not going to meet our traditional ST elevation criteria, but they still do have coronary occlusion and need to have the cath lab activated and be sent to PCI. So where did this come from? The initial study from Drs. DeWinters came out in 2008. Of the 1,500 patients that he studied that had proximal LED occlusion, 30 of them exhibited this traditional or this De Winters T wave pattern. Um, and the important take home point here was the very last sentence of the study had read the following. It's of great importance for physicians and paramedics involved, blah, 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 to recognize this ECG pattern because this is not going to meet your true traditional ST elevation criteria to activate the cath lab. So one thing that I would also like to point out was this was a chart that was taken from the initial study, and I want to point out patient number four here, and notice the time from symptom onset to ECG at the bottom column there, 26 minutes. So if we notice at 26 minutes, the patient exhibited this pattern, you can notably see it in V3 progressing more subtly out to, the, out to V6, but 26 minutes. And then I want to point your attention to patient number seven. That's 141 minutes from time of symptom onset to the ECG. Notice the pattern still is there. So what this means is that from 26 minutes all the way out to 141 minutes, there's no transition from ST depression to ST elevation like we're tradition traditionally taught with um, STEMIs, right? That the ischemia presents as ST depression and then eventually makes its way to ST elevation. In this situation with the De Winters T wave, that pattern is persistent and is going to stay that way. So there's no transition to that ST elevation. So some clinical examples, um, I thank Dr. Griffin on this one. Uh, she had a recent case where this patient presented with some back and chest pain since the night before. Uh, the patient had thought that he had choked on some food. There was some worsening pain, so he came into the ER to be evaluated. This was the presenting 12 lead, was recognized. The patient was sent to cath lab, had three stents placed, uh, two in the circumflex and one in the LAD. This is another example of a De Winters T wave that I got as well. This patient presented with chest pain, arm pain, some shortness of breath, uh, all of which were refractory to nitro. Uh, this patient, this was the 12 lead that they had obtained just prior to the patient coding. Uh, they got ROSC, activated the cath lab, sent the patient to cath, um, and unfortunately I don't have the cath results for this patient. But nonetheless, it, there were some positive findings for um, coronary occlusion with this patient as well. And the last example from ECG medical training, this is a pre-hospital 12 lead that I found online. Great example of a very subtle De Winters T wave pattern that's developing, but you can kind of notice there the ups or upward sloping T waves in V3, the initial portion of the T wave. Notice the peaking of the T wave. Notice the proportion of that peak T wave in relation to the QRS complex, which is going to be a significant finding there. Um, I don't have the outcome for this patient as well, but just a good example of a very subtle De Winters T wave pattern, pattern that's developing in the field. So some final points to remember here. Just don't forget the De Winters T wave is usually indicative of a proximal LAD occlusion. They are not going to meet ST elevation criteria, so we are activating the cath lab for this patient. Remember the pattern. We have the upward sloping T wave, the peak T wave in relation to the QRS complex, and we're looking for this pattern in the precordial leads, most notably V3, V4. And the final thing to remember, these waves are persistent, so they are going to exist throughout the course of the ACS. So this is a T wave pattern that we need to convert to memory. And just remember that when we see this, like I said in the first one, we are activating the cath lab. So 
Let me know what you guys think. There's my Twitter handle, so let me know. Thanks, guys.